Good morning. Welcome to People's Church. Would you stand with us today? Are you ready to worship God? Yeah. Let's put our hands together.
I'm thankful that our God is faithful. How many believe that he is faithful and you've seen it in your life? I can say in my life, I know that God has been faithful. Always there. And even when you're waiting, we know that he is still there. Walking around these walls I thought by now they fall But you have never failed me yet Oh, I'm waiting for change to come It's always there for us. We worship you, God.
stand up and sing. Dear Lord, we thank you today. Lord, across this place today, we lift our voices to you. We say thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for touching this place today. Lord, across this entire community, across the world today, uh, there are people that are worshiping you, and we pray for all of those churches, and we pray for all of those faith families. Today, specifically, 
we think of a church here in town, New Heights Church and Pastor Don Hargis, and we pray that you'd bless them, even as you're blessing here in this place today. Now, Lord, as we go through today, our goal is to lift you up, to make Jesus known even greater than he is today. We want his name lifted up, his name honored, and his name exalted. And so, Lord, as we go through today, we pray everything that would be said and everything that would be done would bring glory to you in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Stop it. Okay. We got like half this place has jerseys on. And, and, and I say, say amen. And you guys give me some haphazard. Man, that, that, that's not acceptable. So right off the bat here, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to say it. Everybody said amen. amen. A much better job by you. Now go ahead and have a seat. See, if you'd have done it right the first time, you could have sat down right off the bat. But nope. Nope. We believe in coaching around here. It's an athletic theme, and you had to be coached up a little bit there, people. Get your game face on. We can't do that all day here, all right? Now go ahead and turn your attention to the screens and watch these videos. Hi, and welcome to People's Church. In the seat pocket in front of you, you'll find a communication card. These cards are a great way for you to communicate with our staff here at People's Church with any prayer requests, praise reports, or to receive more information about anything happening here at People's Church. We pray and look over each and every one of these cards. If you have any children between the ages of six weeks and sixth grade, you don't want them to miss out on anything happening here at PC Kids. This is an opportunity for your kids to learn about Jesus tailored to their age group during any of our gatherings. Fresno Christian is now enrolling students for the 2019-2020 school years. Students from our church have priority enrollment through Friday, April 5th. For more information or to schedule a tour of the school, email info at fresnochristian.com or visit the website www.fresnochristian.com. Join us for our one-of-a-kind Easter production, Greater, featuring a choir, an orchestra, dancers, drama, video, and more. Plan to attend one of our five productions on Saturday, April 20th at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. and Easter Sunday, April 21st at 9.15 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. And don't forget to bring a friend. Ladies, need to get away? Come with us to Wonder Valley Ranch Resort, March 22nd and 23rd for our PC Women's Retreat. This year's theme is Made for This, featuring guest speaker Cindy Franklin from Cornerstone Church and Amber Rhodes from Gateway Worship. Be sure to register today at the table in the lobby. The 11th year of our Spring Break Outreach Breakaway is quickly approaching. Cost is $130. This week is an incredible week filled with serving others, impactful worship, and powerful messages. You do not want them to miss out on one of the best weeks of the year for our student ministries. Signups are available in the lobby today. For more information, email breakaway at peoplesearch.org or write breakaway on your communication card with your contact information and we'll get right in touch with you. When you're done filling out your communication card, go ahead and give it to one of the ushers or put it in any one of our offering containers scattered around the campus. However, if this is your first time here, or maybe first time in a long time, bring your communication card to the VIP room, and we'd love to meet you and give you a gift. If you want to find out more of what's happening here at People's Church, make sure to go to peopleschurch.org slash events, or follow us on Instagram and Facebook at PC Fresno. Well, thanks again for being here. As you just heard, it's our privilege to have you be with us. If you are a first-time guest or first time in a long time, how many of you have never been in this building before in your life? Never for anything, never been in your building. Well, there you go. It's great to see all of you. Shockingly, many of you are wearing black. Um, um, I, don't, I don't know why. It must be like a fad or something. But um, it's great to have you here with us today. We would love to see you if you're a guest. Again, first time or first time in a long time. You'll hear Pastor Dale will let you know at the close of the gathering um, where that's at. But right out these doors, there's a VIP room. But appreciate you being here. Any prayer requests, praise reports, as always, go ahead and put those in the offering as the offering's received in a moment. But I'm going to introduce Jeremy Brown, who's our Fresno Christian superintendent for five years. And he's going to tell you a little bit about Fresno Christian. Thank you, guys. Um, again, like he said, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for People's Church being a member church. And whenever I get asked and get the opportunity to share about our school, I, I try to do it in two things. What we are. We are a TK-12, through fully accredited Christian school. We have a daycare, a nursery on, on, sta on site. And um, we, we offer a full spectrum of activi activities and everything for things. And 
And, and that's a what, if you want to talk to me, I'm in the back after the, in between the gatherings, but the why we do what we do. Right now, Fresno County has about a million people in it. Our church rate at Fresno County on the most optimistic level is about 40%. That means there's 600,000 people that don't know Christ in Fresno County. And, and right now, most of them, demographically, are 25 and below. So they put it about 360,000. And I don't know about you, but I'm 47. My effective rate for reaching a 17-year-old for Jesus is kind of small now. But what we do at Fresno Christian is we groom world changers. Kids are gonna multiply their faith like Maisie, one of my favorite students here, senior. Not only is she up here singing worship, she scored a thousand points career-wise in girls basketball this year, and she does several other things. And we've got other kids playing keyboards back here and alumni. And it's just an awesome opportunity that we have to provide for students. So if you have any questions about us, I'll be in the back. And I want to thank People's Church, Pastor Dale and Pastor Brad, for their partnership for over 40 years. It started here, started with Pastor Johnson. So thank you. And um, it's nice to have all these people come hear me speak. This is great. <laughs> Jeremy's a smart man, got the memo on what colors to wear in everything today. He showed up in red, said, it's not safe, man. Go back and get black. So it is great to have all of you here. Thank you so much for being here. You'll see in our bulletin, we are in what is turning into a week-long celebration as well uh, of Jesus always. But nine years ago, this coming middle of the week, Pastor Dale and Miss Joni, she loves when we call her that. Uh, Joni, go ahead and stand. Just stand so everybody knows who you are. If you don't know who Joni is, there's a lot of guests. This is Joni. Jody leaned over to me beforehand and just said, hey, um, make sure they know that Dale would be worth nothing if it wasn't for me. And we said, I said, we know, we know, we, we already know it. Yep, he's not out here, he'll be out here in a little bit. But it's great to have all of you here, and we're going to honor them more even this next Sunday, so make sure you're here for that. But we want to thank you for being here. Now, our ushers are ready. We're going to receive the Lord's tithe. That's the 10% that belongs to him. So I encourage you to be faithful in your obedience in the area of tithe. Now, we know that there might be some people here from other churches today um, with our special guest. Um, if you are part of a different church, your, your tithe belongs there. Your tithe belongs where you are spiritually fed. So it's great to have you here today. And you say, but I'd still like to give an offering. You're welcome to. But your tithe, that 10% that belongs to the Lord, that belongs at your local church where you are spiritually fed and connected. For if you're part of People's Church, that's here. So make sure that you're faithful in that area. Then our global outreach, which is missions, I want to encourage you in your faithfulness there, those that have made commitments. And then some of you might have known coming into the property, we decided to move a 310 ton building. We're in the middle of a Believe campaign. And for those of you that have participated in that, committed to that, make sure we stay faithful with that as well. We are looking forward to opening that building the first part of April. So we're really excited about opening the G.L. Johnson Chapel um, refreshed and beautiful. So make sure you're faithful in the area of Believe as well. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless this offering. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name that you would now take this offering. Help us to be first and foremost obedient to you. You said the greatest form of praise is just obedience. So Lord, as we praise you today, even in this offer, we pray that we'd be found obedient and tithe. Then anything else that you have spoken to our hearts, let us just respond with yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, one special thing that we are celebrating here today is it's Baptism Sunday. And uh, so we have people who are being baptized and going public with their faith. And so as we uh, sing this song and as the offering is being received, uh, we just want you to do one thing. When they come out of the water, we just want you to give a big cheer saying, Yay, God, thank you for what you're doing with the new life in Christ and how we can celebrate. Can you do that today? I think you can. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer a slave.
Sunday, everybody. How are you? Can we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, by your power and by your spirit, may you 
may you invest in us. May you pour into us today so that when we leave here, we will be different people. For your glory and reputation, we pray. And everyone said amen. amen. Have a seat next and smile to somebody as you're seated. Great to see you. My name is Dale. And I'm so glad that you're here today. But um, you didn't really come to hear me. <laughs> well, maybe you did. But whatever else, uh, this, is a, this is a great day as we had the opportunity to have Derek Carr with us. Who is? Yes. <laughs> I learned today that he was born right here in Fresno, California, right at St. Agnes Hospital. And uh, as, as well as his wife, his wife is a graduate of Fresno Christian Schools. And Derek, immediately you, you get this sense that, number one, he, he loves Fresno and he calls Fresno home. Loves Fresno. And he is, uh, you know, as, as you would get to know him, he is, a, he is as normal as they come. And uh, he is down to earth loves God, has a passion for Jesus, has a passion to let people know what he is all about, that his number one issue, his number one commitment in life is not, not football, not the NFL, and not the Oakland Raiders. It is Jesus Christ. So would you, and I told him, I said, I told him, I said, this is the best church in the world to preach to. So you better, you better not let me down here, all right? Would you give a great welcome to Derek Carr? Enjoy, Derek. Enjoy. Thank you. What's up, everybody? <laughs> How you guys doing? Man, um, as Pastor said, and first I just want to say thank you so much um, for having me. Um, and not just honoring that I'm a football player, you know, that's whatever. You honor the call of God on my life, and so thank you for allowing me to stand here. My grandfather was a, uh, was a pastor his whole life um, for 35 years plus at the same church down in Bakersfield, California. That's like the lower, lesser version of Fresno. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and he always told me that, Derek, whoever I let stand and preach to the people that God has given me, they better come with the truth uh, because I'm responsible. So I just want to put you at ease that if you guys have any problems, just email pastor. Uh, with, uh, but I, I'm just going to preach Jesus if that's okay. Um, you know, it's so cool to be back here in Fresno um, you know, in people's church, because I remember uh, sitting here with my wife, um, just trying to start our family and figure things out. And uh, I remember I was, we were actually here for pastor's first day here, uh, nine years ago. And it's crazy that it's already been nine years, but I'm already starting to lose it a little bit myself right here. But it's crazy how time goes, and it's crazy how fast it goes, and it's crazy how fast life happens. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of things happened in the last, you know, 10 years or so since I got put feet on Fresno State's campus. You know, now I'm going into my sixth year in, with the Oakland Raiders. I never thought in my wildest dreams I would live in Oakland, California, but I'm going there and then I'm going to Las Vegas also. And so uh, probably not the two top choices on my list, but that's where God has sent me. And again, you're going to have to hear what I had to say. God sent me there. You see, I don't go anywhere on accident. I didn't come to Fresno State on accident either. I found a woman who loved me so much that she wanted nothing to do with me because she saw the idiot that I was being. <laughs> but her love for God was more than the love she had for me. She had to obey and honor what he had for her life. And I want to say this to you young ladies right now, uh, that this is just burning on my heart, and I have to tell you that do not settle for anything less than God's best for you. Do not settle one time. You see, he has a plan for you, and you are his daughter. And trust me, if you are his daughter, you must imagine that what he has planned for you is pretty awesome. 
And it is nothing less than what God has planned for you. Don't settle for anything less. You understand what I'm saying? You see, if my wife at the time, my friend, would have settled for me at that moment, it would have been a disaster for her because I was selfish. I wanted anything that would please my flesh and nobody else. I didn't care what anybody else had to say. I didn't want to make anyone else feel good. I just wanted Derek to feel good. You understand what I'm saying? You see, you're like, hold on, why are we having this guy talk to us then? It's because I was justified and redeemed by Christ because of the blood he shed on the cross for you and me that I can stand here before you a different person. And so I say that to you young ladies. I just want you guys to know, don't, don't deal with the idiot like that I was, okay? Don't deal with those guys. You just seek God and just let your husband come fall into your lap. You understand? You see, that now this is going to be the theme of today, that if we seek God, there is healing. If we seek God, chains can be broken. If we seek God, we can be free. If we just would seek him, you don't have to leave this place the same way that you came in. You see, because our God is alive. Our God is not someone that, uh, that we just follow because he had a cool set of moral rules. He's not just someone or something, a statue that we put up and just say, oh yeah, I'm going to follow because I think that that's right and I guess that I won't uh, you know, drink too much or I guess I won't smoke or I guess I won't have sex before I'm married. And then if we meet those goals, we're a good Christian. You see, our God is alive and has so much more and desires so much more than just that for you. You see, I think that when we come to church, so many times I, I would come to church and I was like, man, I can't wait to be filled. And I believe that we are. We, we come to church to learn and be filled and be sent out and do a work. You understand? And so, but what the thing that he's beginning to shift in my mind is that when I show up to church, I also have something to give. I also have a praise to give. The, the Bible calls him the lion of the tribe of Judah. If that was written in all English, it is the lion of the tribe of praise. You know, see, when I think of, I actually heard this said last night, when I think of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, I think of something that happened long ago. You know, the, just that, those words just sound like, yeah, that was back then. But when I hear the Lion of the tribe of praise, I think, well, I know those people. I've seen those people in the church. I watched it happen this morning. You see, that, that, that he fights for us. Those that would praise him and seek him out. The Bible says if you seek him, you will find him. And I've learned these things over my short period of time on this earth. And I want to share some things with you about why I'm here. Also, you know, we're having a conference. I don't know if anybody heard of the altar conference at all. A few, like eight of you, sweet. <laughs> we, uh, we honestly, we have like thousands of tickets sold already, and it's really cool. Um, but I want to tell you how that came to be, because it's not just a cool idea that I came up with. I was sharing with Pastor uh, backstage. This is something that I feel God is really trying to move and do in our community. And I say ours because this is home. This is where I, uh, I, I preach the gospel to people at the gas station. This is where I've laid hands on the sick and prayed for people in the middle of the mall. Like this, these are things that this, this is a place where I've planted roots. Like this is where I started my family. This is home to me. And so it all started in Michigan. You're like, why were you in Michigan? I have no idea. Okay, it was so cold there. I showed up in shorts and a hoodie, and they were like, what is wrong with you? I was like, well, wintertime in Fresno is like 74, so like, I thought I was going to be all right. I show up in Michigan to this men's conference, okay, and uh, I was asked to be a speaker, um, and 10 times out of 10, um, when I'm asked to go somewhere out of the state to speak, it's because I'm the Raiders quarterback, um, and uh, that's fine, uh, and, and people want to take pictures and sign autographs and things like that, and that's cool. Um, but when I talk um, in front of people, I want them to leave with one thing, and that's Jesus. You see, people come into the building, and some, not, not you guys, but when I go other places, they come into the building, and a lot of them are like, man, I just hope that he gives an altar call so I can, like, touch his foot or something, you know? <laughs> Or maybe I'll just get close enough to sneak a selfie of him. Put it as my background on my wallpaper. That's a little creepy, all right? <laughs> you see, they come with that, and then those same people leave touched by the blood of Christ because it's, it, what, what he has to say is way more powerful than what I have to say. You see, I've, I, I want you guys to know I'm, I'm here on direct assignment. I was already praying for you guys for the last week or two, just walking, pacing around my house, just praying that his presence would just drop in this place in a way that we've never seen before. And it has nothing at all to do with me, except I'm just willing to be obedient. 
And so anyway, I go to Michigan, and I'm speaking at this men's conference, and I, I'm, I'm one of those weirdos that likes to sit at the mall and watch people, you know, like guess like who they look like. Like, you're like my third cousin, you know? Uh, and so like, I like to watch people, and I was sitting off to the side, and I was watching as this worship broke out. It was probably a thousand men. And as worship started, they just stood there. They stood there, and they read some words off a screen. A couple of them were clapping off beat. They didn't quite get it yet. Um, and a couple of them were going in, like really pressing in, like really just trying to get what God had for them that day. And there was like a few of those. But the rest of them were just there, maybe because their wife made them, uh, maybe because they wanted to get out of the house <laughs> for a weekend. I don't know. But it was a Friday, Saturday event. And after a while, I'm sitting there watching, and someone speaks, and it, it, you begin to feel this shift take place. And I began throughout the weekend to see these men when worship would start, it went from just, yeah, goodness, this is 30 minutes of something I have to do just to hear a good message. Then it turned into something, no, I have something worth celebrating. Does that make sense? And so as I began to watch, I began to see as the worship would break out as the weekend went on, these men flood the whole church just randomly. They could not stay in their seats because they had finally realized there was something more than just the next promotion. There was something more than just, just a happy marriage. You know, obviously God wants you to have a happy marriage, but there's more. He wants you to have even more than that. You see, it's not fame or success or money that buys happiness. The one true source is Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. And I can stand here and tell you that firmly. That it's no secret. Like everything I do is nationally televised, right? All my mistakes, you guys probably tweet about it, right? <laughs> Why'd you throw it there? Okay, all right. I don't have time to explain to you why that happened, okay? <laughs> but I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I have achieved everything, like, in life, except the Super Bowl, which, Lord, please. Um, <laughs> I've achieved everything that life has to offer. I have a beautiful wife, beautiful, beautiful wife. I have two boys and one on the way in May. So I'll have three boys, my poor wife. <laughs> one on the way in May, three boys. Um, I, I've achieved the success of promotion, right? I've, I've been a Pro Bowl quarterback three times. I wanted to be a Pro Bowl quarterback since I was like his size, right there. Like that was like what I wanted to do. Like I was like, no, like uh, my teachers would be like, what are you gonna do? I'm, I'm Pro Bowl, I'm gonna be a quarterback, make the Pro Bowl one of the best to ever play the game. And they'd be like, all right, like, okay, what's your job gonna be? Like, not on Madden, like, what are you actually gonna do, you know? <laughs> We'd have to talk to the superintendent. We're gonna have to talk to those teachers, man, killing my dreams. Uh, but, but what I've realized, what I've come to realize is everything the world has to offer is fleeting. Everything the world has to offer will always let you down at some point. You see, the applause of man will let you down at some point. I've learned that. You see, when I was young, man, I just wanted to please everybody. And then I got booed for the first time, and I was like, I, I didn't like that. It let me down. The same people that were chanting MVP literally one game ago are now booing me off the field. <laughs> now they want me traded. Now we have Antonio Brown. Now they want me to stay. Now they want me to stay. <laughs> You see, I've dealt with all of these things. I've reached a success. I can go to Target and get what I need to get. That is my main goal was to make sure my wife could go to Target and buy whatever she needed to buy. As a man, I feel accomplished in that, okay? <laughs> but you see, I've, I've achieved these things, and let me tell you, there is nothing, there is nothing like the presence of God. I stand before you here today to tell you a promise that, that, that you'll, it'll stick with you forever. If you don't know it, if you do know it, you'll know what I'm talking about. There is nothing like his presence. There is nothing like seeking him out and being just touched just a little bit by him. There's nothing like it. And these men finally figured it out. And so as I saw them crying, as I saw them weeping and all of these things and going after God, I said, this needs to come home. This needs to come home to the, to the, to the place where I, I want to live someday. This needs to come home 
where there are families and there are men that are right on the brink of really breaking through and leading their family and changing a whole generation of, of things that have been going on and saying, no, this is how we do things now. We look at the cross, and that's what we're going to do. And so I, I let it sit. Again, I didn't want it to be my idea, but then it came to be the altar conference. And God put it on my heart to do it in the Save Mart Center. Why he chose that big of an arena, I don't know yet, Okay. Usually you want to start in like a garage or something. But he said, let's do the Save Mart Center. And I said, on my own strength, that's not possible, but on yours it is. You see, I'm not, I am not a perfect man, but I serve a perfect God. And my goal in my life is just to live a life of obedience. And if he wants the Save Mart Center, we're doing the Save Mart Center. And so on April 5th and 6th, we're going to come together. And I hope it's not something we're just people come in that day and get just radically changed. I hope, it, I hope it happens before that. I hope you're not checking, okay, on April 5th and 6th, I'm going to get my marriage right. On April 5th and 6th, I'm going to get right with God. Or that's when I'm going to pray for that next promotion. Or that's when I'm going to really be freed of being a selfish individual. You see, I hope it's before that. And then when we come on April 5th and 6th, we just come to give something. You understand what I'm saying? We just give an, a celebration, something that has never been seen or heard before. You see, God TV is going to be there. And in 200, over 260 million homes all around the world, this is going to be live televised. And they're going to see Fresno, California on fire for God. And people in India are going to say, I want my church to look like that. <laughs> and so... We have, we have a short video. You see, I, I, it's so burning inside me, and I'm not the best at just articulating exactly what it's going to look like, but we have, a good pe we have good people that are really talented at making videos. So uh, we have a video that I want you guys to check out really quick. Across the pages of scripture and throughout the ages of time, the fathers of our faith would build altars to the Lord and there they would meet with God face to face. We believe God has spoken that the time is right for our nation to come to the altar, to lay down our compromise and complacency and to exalt and encounter Jesus our King. So in April of 2019, we are building that altar. I am completely convinced that one moment in God's presence is enough to transform somebody's life forever. To me, the hope for Fresno is that they would reach, reach the fullness. I want to do this in my home. Out of Fresno, California will come a sound of liberation that will touch the nations of the earth. Every time I watch that, it's just crazy that that just started with me watching people. You know what I mean? It just started with a dream that God placed in my heart, and now there's going to be thousands of people and thousands of families that are going to be changed, you know what I mean, for the, for the sake of Christ. And they're going to leave with, with Jesus. They're going to come in with baggage and chains and things like that. Hopefully, there's going to be a lot of families that come in just to celebrate, you know. But I understand there will be people coming that don't know Jesus, and they're going to leave, and their family's course is going to be changed forever, and I'm pumped about that. So um, there's a place in the back. If you want to come, we would love to have you. There's thousands of people signed up already. If this church signed up alone, we would be at max capacity. So um, it, it's, it, we're excited, to say the least. Um, but you guys okay if I teach you something? Is that all right? All right. You okay if I tell you the truth? Okay, yeah, yeah. So you say yes. All right. You okay if I challenge you? Because this is my turn. See all your tweets that you've sent me? 
you guys didn't know that I was going to end up with the mic. <laughs> Everything you said behind my mouth, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys okay if I challenge you? Is that okay? Who came to get closer to Jesus today? I know I did. Oh, like, good, 32 of you. 32 people came to get closer to Jesus. I'm going to ask you again, how many really came to know the Savior just a little bit better today, honestly? Yeah. All right. We're going to find out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to teach you. I'm being Matthew 3. If you guys have your Bibles, go turn to Matthew 3. And uh, I'm going to talk about John the Baptist. Um, John is a crazy man. I'll say that. You'll see here why in a second. This man, his clothes were woven with camel hair. And his diet was locusts and honey. I don't know about you, but that's a little weird, okay? This man's ministry, like he had everything paved out for him, you know, in his family's tradition to be in the priesthood and all of these things. But John decided that, obviously, through the grace of God and the Holy Spirit, that there was, there was going to be something else for his life. He, he, he decided to start his ministry by standing in the wilderness and shouting at people. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, Pastor, but I don't know if like, that would be the ideal way to start your ministry, um, to just go stand at Shaw and, and Cedar and just start yelling at people. Honestly, it would be kind of normal, the southern, most south we get, to just stand on the corner and yell at people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I used to live south of Shaw, so people thought I was crazy, and I am a little off to play football. But this is, we're going to talk about John the Baptist, and I'm going I'm to show you something. He, he had the opportunity that no one else before him had. He gets this great opportunity that we're going to talk about, and I, I just can't wait to see what God does. So I'm going to start in verse 1. Hopefully everyone's there. I gave you time. See how I did that? I bought a little time for you to open your Bibles. These are Bibles. You can read them. It's God's Word. It's good for you. There's actually on your phone, there's an app for that now. They have them on your phones. You have no excuse on why oh, I just didn't get to it. No, you just chose Twitter instead. Verse 1 says, In those days, John the Baptist began preaching in the Judean wilderness. His message was, Turn from your sins and turn to God, because the kingdom of heaven is near. Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare a pathway for the Lord's coming. Make a straight road for him. John's clothes were woven from camel hair, and he wore a leather belt. His food was locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and and from every section of Judea and from all over the Jordan Valley went out to the wilderness to hear him preach. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to, ba to be baptized, he denounced them. You bread of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee God's coming judgment? Prove by the way that you live that you really turn from your sin and turn to God. Don't just say we're safe. We are the descendants of Abraham. That proves nothing. God can change these stones here into children of Abraham. I'm going to stop right there really quick. This is an amazing thing that he points at these, at these people that they knew everything, basically, about God's word. He knew everything. And he said, prove by the way that you live you have really turned from your sin and turned to God. You see, I, when I was here in Fresno, Early on in my life, I did not prove by the way that I live that God had transformed my life. I was the guy smoking weed, going to parties I shouldn't be going to, doing other things that I should not be doing. And what I would continue to do is every Saturday night, I'd get to my bed or at my apartment or the door, wherever I lived at that time, and I'd get there and I'd get on my knees and I'd pray, Lord, forgive me of my sins, amen. Okay, I made it. <laughs> That's what I would do every Saturday. Every Saturday, it was like clockwork. I knew I was going to do all these things. I was going to be a really nice guy, talk about Jesus, maybe even speak at an FCA event. But I knew what I was going to do. Had it already mapped out and planned. And I would do these things and live this sinful life trying to please my own flesh. And it wasn't until that I was just wrecked by Jesus that I turned from that way of life. You see, it is not just enough to just say with your mouth, like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to live for him. Yeah, I'm a Christian. God bless you. Greet somebody at the door. Hey, nice to see you. It's awesome. Come to church and check a box. Oh, I read my Bible today. I'm going to check that box too. You see, I think that Jesus wants more than that. And not just wants more than that. I think he's offering more than that. 
more than just a, a life of checking boxes and just saying with our mouth that we do these things, and a life of complete devotion, utter and complete devotion to our Savior and celebrating Him and praising Him and reading His truth and living it out. You see, uh, my generation, and this did not happen with my dad, but my generation was like our dads, like that generation, our, my dads, our dads, was like they would have a dirty magazine or something like that. You know, they would have, they would have something in their, in their drawer, their sock drawer or something like that hidden away. And who knows, little kids, they get nosy and they go find those kind of things and it could wreck their life. It could change things and flick switches that they don't need flicked. And it can send them on this course of sin that they don't need to live on. You see, but, but the, the decision that I made was when I was sitting in church one day and I looked over, and I mean, I'm just kind of chilling, just my family made me come, kind of, I'm a kid. And I look over at my dad and he's weeping and crying his eyes out. I never saw my dad cry until this moment. He's weeping and crying his eyes out, praying for his kids, just praising God because Jesus was worth it. And that's the legacy that I saw. It wasn't someone that just ran their mouth. He lived it out. He loved my mom the way that she was intended to be loved. He treated us kids the way and, and loved us the way that we are treated, we're supposed to be treated and intended to be loved and treated. You see, not everybody has that background. You see, but I had the conscious decision of, am I going to keep running my mouth and just, yeah, I'll teach my kids Jesus, but hope, I don't know what they're going to find out someday. I don't know what friend of mine or, or acquaintance they're going to run into, and then they'll tell them a story, and that may wreck my kid's image of their dad, which at some point I'll get upset and throw a football at them, and they'll be erect anyway. No, I'm just kidding. I don't do that. You see, because I'm not perfect, but what my life is going to do is I'm going to point my kids to Jesus. They're going to see me laying on my face crying out their names. When they walk by my office now, they see Dad laying on the floor just crying out to God that he would protect them and bring them a wife that would love them and lead them closer to him. They already see it. I already teach my kids how to lay down and go after God with everything in them. See, that's the legacy that I want to leave. I'm doing this. I'm living this thing out. I didn't always do it, but I figured this thing out that I need to live this thing out and really show my kids what it looks like to be a man of God. I'm going to love their mom the way that they're supposed to love their wife someday. I'm going to show them what it looks like. I'm going to show them what it looks like and how it looks like to talk to a lady. Not only a lady, but God's daughter. You see, when I start to treat her as God's daughter and not just my wife, my heart's posture shifts, my heart's posture changes, and I start treating her as such. Does that make sense? And so I just wanted to start that right there and tell you just a little bit about John. And now you can read more in Matthew 3. You can read more in John 1. The whole story is there, but because of time, I'm just going to tell you a story about him, okay? And it's exactly from the Word of God. You see, John started shouting in the wilderness, repent of your sins for the, kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. You see, if the kingdom of heaven is near, that means, wait, it's not just some far off place that when I die, I go if I live right. You're saying the kingdom of heaven is near, that means it's tangible. That means, I, man, I, somehow I should be able to get closer to it, right? It's right here. And so as he begins to shout these things, I, I begin to see this crazy guy just shouting in the wilderness. Just, just imagine we're south of Shaw and just in a park and someone is shouting, repent of your sins for the kingdom of heaven is near. I'm sure that there'd be a group of people standing around looking around like, what is this guy talking about? I'm sure they would start like that. But then I'm sure that God would move and there would be one person that says, I, I actually, I need to go see what this guy's talking about. You see, the Bible says that they started to come from all over, so, but it had to start with one, right? Maybe two? And so I began to see these people starting to come around where he was baptizing people. And they began to flood, and they began to listen, they began to take note, and they began to watch what he's doing. And the Bible says that as these people would come, they would repent of their sins. I'm an adulterer. I cheated on my spouse. I'm the most selfish person in the world. I cheated on that test. I cheated that business deal and swayed it for our profit. I'm a terrible husband. I'm a terrible father. Whatever their story was, I'm addicted to A, B, C, D. Whatever it is, they begin to repent of their sins and be baptized by water. 
You see, John also says that some, there's one that is coming that, I see, I baptize with water, but he baptizes with the fire. <laughs> You see, he was, he was pointing at Jesus the whole time. John had a platform, and there were, just imagine, uh, John is standing here, and all of you are just listening to what he says. He's baptizing people, and they're repenting of their sins. That would be an amazing moment in the ministry, am I not mistaken? Like, that would be awesome if just all of a sudden pastor is preaching, and people just begin to run down, repenting of their sins, not caring what anyone else thinks. They just know they need to get closer to God. Like, I don't care what the person to my left or to my right has to say. I just know that I need Jesus more. And this is happening. And John is in the middle of it. That was like the height. Like, this has to be the most amazing moment for a minister to be able to stand there and say, come on. You know, they're lined up just all around him and just, yeah, you too, come on. Baptize. And they're repenting. They're coming to know that there is a Savior coming. You see, everybody before John was saying, there is someone coming, there is someone coming, there is someone coming. Everyone was excited. They, they even asked, are, are you the one? No, no, I'm not the one. I'm just preparing a way. And so as this is happening, as people are being baptized, as this is going on, the most amazing thing happens. And it's written in John, I forget, it's John 1, I forget the verse. Find it for you. It's verse 29. It says, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It was the first time that some minister or pastor, whatever you want to call him, it was the first time that someone got to say, there he is. There he is. You see, before that, it was just, he's coming. Like, if I was going to tell you, hey, um, Antonio Brown is coming, like, oh, sick, Raider fans, like, wow, we really hope so. But then he shows up, and things start to change, right? <laughs> Hopefully for me. Um, <laughs> but way cooler than Antonio Brown is Jesus, the Savior of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the moment of his greatest moment in ministry, he still knew that there he is. It was not about him. It is not about me and playing football. It is not about the stage or the platform that I have. I'm going to point you to Jesus every time you see me. That is why I'm standing here today with three beautiful boys. That's why I'm standing here today with a wife that loves me and knows that I'm not going to run around on her. It is because of my love for that Savior, that sacrificial lamb that died for me while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. In my worst moment, down in Herndon or down at the frats, at my worst moment, Jesus said, you're worth it. I'm dying for you, Derek. And let me tell you, if I cry in front of you, it's because I found something worth fighting for. He saved me from a life aimed straight for hell and said, no, 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 come live with me. I have so much more for you. I have so much more planned for you. And John is sitting there, and John got it. And John said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What a moment that was. All of these things. I could imagine praying for people and just seeing people being healed, cancer being set free, they're repenting of their sins. All of these things are taking place and being a little bit foggy on really focusing on Jesus because this is God's work. This is what he wants. You see, but even in that moment, even in that moment, John knew that all of this is great, but that is the reason all of this is happening. And I'm here to stand here and tell you today, the only reason that you're feeling that conviction in your heart is Jesus. The only reason you know you need to stop going on those websites is Jesus. The only reason you know you're, you need to stop going to that certain place you've been going to behind your fa family's back is because of Jesus. The only reason you know you need to be a better husband is Jesus. The only reason you know you need to be a better father or mother is Jesus. The, the, you parents, the way that you speak, the way that you dress, your, your kids are going to follow you. They look up to you. You're their first superhero that they know until the girls get about 12 and the boys grow up and just want to be their own man. But until then... You are what they get to see. And who are you pointing them towards? What music are you allowing in your house? Even behind the scenes, things that they don't see. What are you allowing as a man to come into your household? The Bible says whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There is a spirit of praise that is loosed in my house. 
I have bound up lust in my house because I'm going to make it easy for my kids. I'm going to make the decision for them that it's not going to be hard for them. I've already made that decision. I've bound those things up when I was a boy. I've bound them up. Now I can stand here as a man and say, no, 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 no. That's not going to be the case for my kids. Imagine what is at our disposal now. What's going to happen when my five-year-old is 18? What is going to be at his disposal? And is he going to stand there? Is he going to be man enough to say, no, no, that's not for me? And as long as I keep pointing him to Jesus, he will always know the truth. He will always know the truth. And so... I'm just, so, I'm just so struck and thankful for what God has done for me. It has nothing to do with football. and has everything to do with what he did in my heart. And I know if he changed mine, he can change yours. He took a completely selfish person that only cared about what I had. I only cared about what I could do, what, I, what could gain for me. He took me and gave me this soft heart that literally watches people worship and I cry. I feel God's heart for you. I literally sit back there in the back room and I begin to tear up because he loves you so much and he just wants you to come grasp it. It doesn't matter how far you've ran. It doesn't matter what you did last night or this morning. Jesus is always there waiting for you right behind you saying, just come walk with me. You see, in the middle of everything that I'm going through and all of these things, I came here to tell you, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, even you Christians, even you that aren't Christians, there's something in your heart right now you know that needs fixing. And so right now, if the prayer team and the worship team wouldn't mind coming up, I'll be done here in just a second. You guys said it was okay if I challenged you. You said it was okay if I told you the truth. And I've tried to do that to the best of my ability. That Jesus loves you and he died for you even at your worst moment. And he is alive, sitting at the right hand of the Father. Prepare, he prepared the way for you to have a relationship with him. I want to ask some of you, and if we could just bow our heads for a second and close our eyes out of respect for those around us. I'm going to tell you something real quick. Don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> Jesus lived a perfect life. He's a real man. Even the atheists know that he was a real person. He lived a life of perfect, blameless life. And he died for you, was beaten so bad that they couldn't even recognize his face. And he died for you. At your worst moment, he said, you were worth it. Even if you're a believer, he died for you at your worst moment. And then he rose again three days later, and now he is alive, and we serve a living God, seated at the right hand of the Father. See, I'm going to ask you this right now. If you have never heard that and you want to accept Jesus for the first time, would you just raise your hand? Would you just raise your hand? Thank you. I see him. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I see it. You can put it down. I see him. I see him. I see him. You can put him down. You guys can open your eyes. You see, I saw you raise your hand, and I'm going to be honest with you. I love you enough that I will come grab you out of your seat and fight you and drag you up here if I have to. There is no judgment in this place. If anyone judges you, they have to answer for that. Not you. You don't have to worry about what one thing somebody says. You just worry about what's going on between you and God right now. And so if you have never accepted Jesus and you want to, I want you to come forward. I want to pray with you. I know it's weird. There's a lot of people. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, man. Thank you. Thank you. Please, come on. Thank you, Jesus. I want you guys to know that all of heaven is celebrating you right now. All of heaven. They are celebrating and throwing a party for you right now and your decision to follow Christ. If you guys wouldn't mind, just stay right here. You're the bold ones. You guys are the bold ones. You guys are up here with me, so we're good, all right? You got nothing to worry about, okay? We're gonna pray here in just a second. Now, you believers that got it all right, how many of y'all need God to do something in your life? Just raise your hand, just let me see. Okay, I see your hands. They were bold enough to come up here and say, man, I need this Jesus that you're talking about. I don't know what that is, but I need it. You need Jesus to do something in your life, then come get it. I want you guys to come now. If you need Jesus to do something, this altar is open. It is here for you to leave what you need to leave. You see, you don't have to come in with the same addictions that you came in with. 
You don't have to leave uh, the same parent that you were, the same husband or wife that you were. You don't have to leave the same way. You can come up here right now and change it forever. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you. You see, there is only one thing that I came to do, and it's exactly what John the Baptist did, and that is to point you and say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's what I came to do. And all of you were struck by something. You felt God moving in your heart somehow, some way. You knew you needed a change. You knew you, that you could not leave this place the same way that you entered. We're going to worship and praise God, and I don't want you to leave this place until you get your answer that you're looking for. Let me say this, it may not be the answer that you want, but I promise you that he does answer prayers, that we serve a God that will answer you, that does love you unconditionally. No matter what you've done, no matter the thoughts that you've had, he loves you and he wants to do something for your life. Anybody receive that? Thank you, Father. Let me pray with you real quick. Jesus, I thank you so much, dear God. For these two that came up here, Father God, wanting to repent of their sins and make you the Lord and Savior of their life, they denounce all the, the sin, the devil's works in their life, and they accept you as their Lord and Savior, Father God, that they would be made white as snow, that you, even at this moment, dear God, their sin is no more. It is as far as the east is from the west, as your word says, and that they get a new relationship, a new birth, and a new start with you today, Jesus. Now I pray for everyone that needs you to do something in their life. You see, Father God, you can see them, dear God. You know what's going on in their heart way better than I do. And I pray right now in Jesus' name that they don't leave your presence and they don't leave worshiping you until they get their answer. The only answer is at your feet. Dear God, they can, they can just say a quick prayer like, please fix this. They can do that or they do this or listen to some worship music on the way home. But dear God, the answer is just at your feet, Father. How we cry out, Abba, Father. Dear God, you are so worthy. You are so glorious. You are so deserving of our praise. You are the lion of the tribe of praise. Do not let them stop praising until you do something in their life. Do not let them stop. If you are real and we know that you are, do not let them stop worshiping you. We are going to turn this worship music up, and you guys are going to go ahead and get, be able to press in to God. Pastor is going to share with you a little bit. But do not leave his presence. Do not leave his presence until you get what you came for. Even walking up here was enough to let Jesus work in your life. Even just coming up here, answering that call on your life was enough for him to begin to shift some things in your life. You see, man, I have laid on my face and I've cried my eyes out for a lot of things because I need Jesus because nothing in this world can satisfy my, my needs and my joy, but Jesus can. And every time I lay at his feet, I leave with peace, I leave with his grace on my life, and I leave a completely different person. This isn't something that you only can have to do on a Sunday. You can do this every day in your household. You can do this in your shower, in your car. I have stopped on the freeway, got out of my car and began to praise God because he just deserved it. I'm the crazy guy that you probably saw on the freeway. But thank you so much for having me. I love you guys. Do not leave his presence. Do not leave this altar until you've left what you came to bring to him. Do not leave this place. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. Thank you. Let's all stand together and let's celebrate what God is doing in this place even now. Let's just thank the Lord. Father, thank you for all you're doing right now in this place and in our hearts and in our lives to change and transform us. In Jesus' name. If you, uh, it, you I, the worship band is going to be praying and they're going to be leading in worship, you can stay right down here and there'll be prayer team members that will be praying with you. If you need instructions on what to do next, there are response stations at the back of this room and in the balcony. And if you're a guest of ours, we'd love to meet you at the VIP room through those doors on my left a few steps to the left and we'd love to meet you there and give you a gift. Again, can you help me thank Derek Carr for being here today? And as we worship the Lord, or we go loving each other, Father, I thank you and give you glory for all that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. 
Remember to sign up for a women's retreat. Check out Fresno Christian and the altar conference in the lobby. 